Hello YouTubers, how's everybody doing out there in YouTube land? Hopefully you're doing pretty good. I'm not doing too bad myself. As you can see, we have nice blue skies after a pretty big storm earlier. Now it's drying out a little bit, and now I can get over here and start working on this 2003 Ford Explorer. And in my last video, you probably saw where I had replaced my TPMS, my tire pressure sensor. Um, I replaced this one. And I went around to try to program them all and uh, let the air out and see if the horn would blow. This one worked, but I went to the uh, passenger side over here, did the same thing with it. Uh, turned the key on and off three times, hit the brake, blah, blah, blah. I'll show you that here in a little bit. I got over here. This one would not uh, program. The horn would never blow. So what I did, I went out and bought three or more of these tire pressure sensors because I didn't want to do any guesswork. I don't have the $300 tool that you need. To find out which ones that uh, are bad so I just went on ahead and purchased three of these all right so we'll go ahead and go go ahead and go into the vehicle That's what I'm trying to say and uh, when I start it up I'll show you what's going on here I have the tire pressure sensor fault uh, on the information center here um, this will not go away until you resolve this um, like I said I already replaced the left front one and got it to program it recognized it but as I was letting air out of the right side, the horn would never did never did blow, and I come back in and it says I'll have to retrain the tires again. So what I did, I just went out and bought three brand new ones, and I got uh, these three plus the one I bought the other day, uh, a total of four. I got them all for sixty dollars for free shipping. Now if you go to Ford and buy these, I believe these are about one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars. Uh, I bought mine on eBay from a guy, a dealer. And uh, these are, uh, they have a warranty with them. So what we're going to do is go ahead and replace the other three. Uh, I might as well, that will have four new ones in it. And I won't have to worry about anything down the road. And as you can see, it just constantly stays on. So uh, this is pretty annoying. Might as well go ahead and get this fixed. That way I can go in here and check my mileage and check some other things. You can go over here on this uh, Ford Explorer this year. And, and, and hit these buttons and you can briefly see a couple of uh, things that you want to see up on the information dash say your your uh, gas mileage and all that but this will go right back to this and this tire fault pressure sensor warning will stay on so we're going to fix this today and I'm going to show you how to do it all right so like I said I've already replaced this one here and what I'm going to do I'm not going to film uh, me replacing these three because they're pretty easy to do. I, I'm going to break my own tires down and do it myself. I'm actually going to do it with my uh, Land Rover. Piece of wood, flip the tire over, break it down with a tire iron. I have a video on how to do that, but if you want to take yours to a, a tire place and have them put it in, that might be better for you if you don't have the, the excess like I have. So we're going to replace this one here. We're going to replace this right rear one. And then we're going to go ahead and finish up and replace this one on this side and hopefully this will take care of my pressure fault sensor indicator on my dash and I can uh, finish this uh, job up and I'll have to worry about it no more. So when we come back here, uh, I'll let you know that I'm finishing this one up, the very last tire up, and then we'll go in here and we'll turn the key on and off a few times and get it into program mode and we'll let some air all these tires and see if we can get that pressure sensor fault off and program the tires. So I'll be back in a little bit and we'll see if this works out. Okay, now I am on my last tire, and I just wanted to kind of touch with you guys here. You don't have to take the tire, clear off the rim. If you break it down on one side, just simply push down on the tire, and you can get in here and take this out like this. I should have clarified that earlier, and you can just kind of push down like that, and out comes the old one. Then we just put the new one in. We'll clean this stem up here real good, make sure there's no dirt in there, and we'll simply put the other one back on. And the nice thing is when you uh, are done, that bead will go right up against that tire and you can shoot air into it and it will seal and it will save you about 50% of the time if you're going to do it, uh, do it yourself. At least uh, half the time if you take the wheel off the rim, but you don't have to do that. So we are, are on our last tire and we're going to stick this on and we'll go ahead and start programming. Okay, so one other quick thing, while you're, when you get done, spray a little soapy water around your valve stem, make sure there's no leaks. And if there's no leaks, then we can put the tire on and program. Okay, and as you can see, we've got our last TPMS sensor on. I'm happy about that. I got all four tires aired up to 35 pounds because we'll have to let some air out. Let's go inside. 
and cycle the key on and off and get it into program mode. So here we go. Grab the key. We got to turn it on and off three times the first time. One, two, three. Hit the brake and release. Turn it off. Cycle it three more times. And you'll hear the horn blow. And it will say down here on the bottom, go ahead and train the left front tire. So we'll grab our little tire, I mean our tire, our little screwdriver, and we'll start letting some air out until the horn beeps. That took forever. Let's go look and see what it says. Now it says train front right tire. You can have a little patience. Sometimes it can take a while. So let's go on this side. And we'll start letting some air out here. I'm just going to make one continuous video. I don't know who thought of this, but... Uh, <laughs> wow. This will probably take longer than introducing these PPMS sensors. All right, that one's, I believe, train. Let's go see what the information center says. And it says train the right rear tire. Can you see that there? All right, let's go out back and do the right rear tire. You have to have patience, like I said. It beeped. Let's go see what the information center says. I'm doing it for my peeps. And it looks like train the left rear tire can you see that there all right so we got one more tire to do let's do this one so it looks like about a minute or so of letting air out that's how long it takes which i would understand because the pressure change that sensor detects it has to be picked up by the radio frequency little PPMS sensor. I got faith in you. Yay! Let's go see what the information center says. How about that, huh? Tire training mode complete. Yes. Yes. All right, let's shut the key off. Take the key out and we'll restart it. And how about that? No more tire pressure sensor warning signals. So I hope this helps you guys out. I'm pretty happy. It looks like we uh, have succeeded. So let me just go out here before I wrap the video up. It's getting kind of late. And here are my old sensors. So I'm not sure if they uh, can redo these or whatever. Some, some models on these Explorers, Mountaineers, you got to use a magnet. You can use a magnet. But most of them, you just let the air out of the tires, or you can buy that $200 tire that you point at that sensor, and somehow it communicates and works that way. So uh, just do some research on your own vehicle or SUV and find out uh, what works for you. So other than that, I'm going to end the video. It's getting dark out here, so thanks, guys, for watching, and I hope to help somebody out. And if I did, hey, give me a thumbs up and let me know where you're watching from. Until my next video, guys, I will see you later. Keep cool and be kind.